Jerome Hayden J. Powell has served as the 16th chair of the Federal Reserve of the United States since 2018. Prior to his tenure at the Federal Reserve, Powell had a background as an investment banker and American attorney. Let's delve into his early life. Jerome Hayden J. Powell was born on February 4, 1953 in Washington, D.C. Grew up in a family of six children, with Patricia and Jerome Powell as his parents. His father worked as a lawyer in private practice, while his mother was a homemaker. Notably, his grandfather held the position of dean at the Columbus School of Law at the Catholic University of America, which further solidified the influence of law within his family. With a family background related to law and order, Powell developed an interest in politics. He pursued a bachelor's degree in arts and politics at Princeton University, graduating in 1975. Following his undergraduate studies, Powell served as a legislative assistant to Richard Schawacker, a senator from Pennsylvania. In 1979, Powell earned his jurisdiction degree from Georgetown University Law Center. He then moved to New York City, where he began working as a clerk for Judge Ellsworth Van Graffeldland of the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. From 1981 to 1983, Powell practiced law at Davis Polk in Wardwell, and from 1983 to 1984, he worked at Werbel and McMillan as a lawyer. His career path shifted in 1984 when he joined the investment bank Dillon Reed & Company. There, he specialized in financing, merchant banking, and mergers and acquisitions. Powell steadily rose through the ranks, eventually becoming a vice president at the firm. These early experiences in law and finance laid the foundation for Powell's later achievements and prepared him for the pivotal role he would assume as chair of the Federal Reserve. Following his previous experiences, Powell's career continued to evolve in various roles. In 1990, he joined the United States Department of Treasury, where he served until 1993. Later, George W. Bush nominated him as the Undersecretary of Treasury for Domestic Finance. During this time as the Treasurer, Powell played a pivotal role in the investigation and sanctioning of Sullivan Brothers. This was prompted by one of their traders submitting false bids for U.S. Treasury security. Powell also participated in negotiations that led to the appointment of Warren Buffett as Chairman of Sullivan. In 1993, Powell took on the role of Managing Director of Bankers Trust. However, he departed from the bank in 1995 due to concern raised by high net worth clients about the potential for significant losses. Subsequently, he returned to Dillon Reed & Company. From 1997 to 2005, Powell became the partner at the Carlisle Group, a renowned private equity firm within the firm he founded and led the industrial group within the Carlisle U.S. Buyout Fund. After leaving the Carlisle Group, Powell funded Seven Capital Partners, a private investment firm focusing on specialty finance and opportunistic investments in the industry sector. In 2008, he took on the role of managing partner at the Global Environmental Fund, a private equity and venture capital firm that specializes in sustainable energy investments. These diverse roles in finance, investment, and sustainable energy underscored Powell's extensive experience and expertise in various sectors, ultimately shaping his path to becoming the chair of the Federal Reserve. During the 2011 debt ceiling crisis, Powell played an active role in advocating for Congress to raise the United States debt ceiling. As a member of the think tank in Washington, D.C., he discussed the potential effects of default or a delay in raising the debt ceiling on the economy and interest rates. Notably, Powell accepted a salary of only $1 per week for his work. In December 2011, then-President Barack Obama nominated Powell for the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. This nomination was significant as it marked the first time since 1988 that a president nominated a member of the opposition party for such a position. On May 25, 2012, Powell was sworn in to fill an unexpired term of Frederick Mishkin, who had resigned. He was later nominated for a second term in January 2014, and in June 2014, the United States Senate confirmed him for a 14-year term ending on January 31, 2028. On November 2, 2017, President Donald Trump nominated Powell as the chair of the Federal Reserve, succeeding Janet Yellen. As the Fed chair, Powell had three primary responsibilities setting monetary policy and interest rates, overseeking bank regulations, and serving as the public face of the institution. Throughout his tenure at the Fed, Powell consistently expressed his concerns and viewpoints at the decision-making table, never casting a dissenting vote. One of the initial actions as chair was to continue raising U.S. interest rates in response to the strengthening U.S. economy. Additionally, Powell announced the Federal Reserve's intention to reduce its asset portfolio from $1.5 trillion to $2.5 to $3 trillion over a four-year period, a process known as quantitative tightening. 
This involved the central bank selling financial assets from its balance sheet into financial markets, leading to lower asset prices and higher interest rates. While Powell holds significant influence as the Federal Reserve Chairman, it's worth noting that he has expressed a negative stance towards cryptocurrencies, despite being considered one of the most powerful individuals in the crypto space. In, re in response to the coronavirus crisis, Powell implemented expansive monetary measures, conducting the largest monetary experiment in history. This included expanding the supply of U.S. dollars, nearly doubling the Fed's balance sheet, and allowing the economy to run hot amid concerns about inflation. There is an ongoing debate regarding the extent in which the easy monetary policy contributed to the significant increase in asset valuations witnessed in the cryptocurrency market this year. However, one undeniable fact is that during this period of unprecedented monetary interventions, a greater number of individuals have embraced Bitcoin as a means to hedge against inflation. Despite encountering initial oppositions, Jerome Powell was nominated to assume the role of the head of the Central Bank of America, positioning him as the second most influential individual in the country, following the president. Following his tenure at the Central Bank, Powell made the decision to introduce a Central Bank digital currency. Powell's rationale for this move stems from his belief that new forms of digital currency, including cryptocurrencies and stablecoins, pose risk to the younger generation. He highlights that our existing regulatory framework were not designed with the digital world in mind, acknowledging the need for adaptation. Stablecoins specifically are a type of cryptocurrency that is often tied to the value of the US dollar or other commodities such as gold. On the other hand, central bank digital currencies refer to the government-issued digital representations of national currencies. While the Federal Reserve is actively exploring the concept of digital dollars, a final decision on their issuance has yet to be made. In January, the Federal Reserve published a study focusing on stablecoins, aimed at deepening their understanding of this digital asset class. As the landscape of digital finance continues to evolve, the introduction of stablecoins, central bank digital currencies, and digital finance in general will necessitate adjustments to existing laws and regulations, and may even require the development of an entirely new framework to govern these emerging technologies. If you're not familiar with cryptocurrencies or stablecoins, allow me to provide an explanation. Stablecoins are a specific type of cryptocurrency that is typically pegged on the value of a US dollar or a commodity like gold. On the other hand, central bank digital currencies are digital forms of national currencies issued by governments. While the Federal Reserve is currently investigating the concept of digital dollars, a final decision of their implementation has not been reached. While numerous central banks worldwide have embraced digital currencies, the United States has lagged behind in this aspect, leaving it at a disadvantage in the race towards becoming a digital-oriented nation. Consequently, the Federal Reserve has determined that the United States should issue its own digital currency, which would enable efficient and cost-effective transactions while maintaining a focus on security. This step aims to safeguard the interest of users and promote a more streamlined financial ecosystem, particularly concerning cross-border fund transfers and payments, as well as enhancing financial systems accessibility while mitigating risks associated with privately administrated digital assets like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. The Federal Reserve emphasizes the need for a central bank digital currency. Unlike existing digital money used by Americans for transactions, which primarily resides in bank accounts, payment app, or online platforms, a central bank digital currency would differ in that it would be a liability for the Federal Reserve rather than a commercial bank. A central bank digital currency would represent the safest form of digital assets available to the general public, devoid of credit or liquidity risks since it would be backed by the Federal Reserve's liability. Regarding Powell's financial status, his recent financial disclosure from June reveals a net worth estimated to be around $19.7 million and $55 million. Powell is described by his friends and former colleagues as refreshingly ordinary. He resides in Chevy Chase, Maryland and frequently commutes to the Federal Reserve, covering the eight miles on his bicycle. He maintains a modest alcohol consumption, enjoys activities such as golf and playing the guitar, and possesses a unique talent for repeating people's sentences backwards, showcasing his intelligence and attentive listening skills. Powell advocates for the presentation of opposing viewpoints in a clear and assertive manner before making decisions, as he believes the best outcomes are achieved through such deliberation. He expresses this sentiment during a speech in West Virginia in March. That concludes today's discussion. Stay tuned for more captivating content, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and activate the notification bell icon to stay informed about our latest videos.